Okay, first things first. Um, I have been away for a couple days and away from my email. It was my girlfriend's birthday weekend. And as you can imagine, I was quite busy. So I come back yesterday to discover that the Words of Power bonus video that I had uploaded to the digital download service had been removed for whatever reason, unknown to me. So I've re-uploaded it and sent out the notifications again for those who may have missed it. If you've already received it and gotten that download, then you can disregard this. But I want to make sure that everybody who has paid for the program gets that bonus video as they're entitled to it. I apologize for any inconvenience because I'm sure you're aware that I want to make it as convenient as possible for each and every one of you. So if you happen to have missed the bonus video, it's back up and I will be checking on it periodically throughout the week to make sure it stays up. And with that out of the way, let's get into it. As you may know, I talk about polarity on this channel quite a bit. Because it's this duality that is the framework for our reality. Pretty important stuff. But how did this come about? Is there anything that we can point to that explains why polarity is a necessity? And yes, there is. To understand the origins of polarity, we have to go all the way back to the book of Genesis. As that is the only story that I'm aware of that explains the origins of polarity and duality. And as I've stressed before, the Bible is highly symbolic. And after this story, you'll understand a bit better of what I mean by that. I'm sure that most of you are familiar with the story of the Garden of Eden and original sin. But let's go back and talk about it just a moment. So God told Adam and Eve that they could eat of any of the fruit in the garden except for the fruit from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, we're not going to get into what a total setup this was. I mean, the tree could have been put anywhere else. And who created the serpent that was there? Which we'll get to in a moment. But anyone who has children knows that the quickest way to get them to do something is to tell them not to do it. In hypnosis, we call this negative suggestion. And it's such an incredibly powerful force that Darren Brown master hypnotist is able to get a lady to seemingly kill a kitten simply by telling her not to. I'll put the clip of that right here and if you're interested in the entire program I'll put links to that here as well. So do you really believe that the creator of everything doesn't know about the power of negative suggestion? And I touched on this in the Words of Power bonus video a bit about how when you want to rid yourself of negative thoughts to use the words banish, deny, and reject as opposed to words such as I don't accept that because the subconscious mind does not understand negative context. So you want to avoid using words such as can't, don't, etc. Because trying to rid yourself of negative thoughts by saying, I don't allow that, will not have any effect. So, the serpent tempts Eve into eating the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil by telling her that she will become like God. Pretty tempting. Who or what is the serpent? 
Well, the serpent is representative of Scorpio, the sign of Scorpio, the sign of sex, death, and transformation. And it's telling her that she will be transformed into a god. Scorpio is also the sign of the occult, mysteries, and hidden things. Everything's secret. So this is a thought process. This is a part of the subconscious. And she's wondering about the mystery. Well, why can't we eat of the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil? There's a curiosity there. It's that negative suggestion going to work on the mind. Scorpio is the only sign with three representative avatars each representing a different level of its being. The first is the scorpion, the lowly scorpion who indiscriminately stings whoever is nearby. The next level up is the serpent. The serpent is a little more calculating in who it strikes. And it's also the level that's proficient at healing because Scorpio is the sign of healing as well. This is why the medical field uses the serpent as one of its symbols. The angel Raphael, associated with Mercury, also carries the Caduceus staff. Hermes. And so it's showing you right there that when Mercury is in Scorpio, is a really good time to do healing work. Hint, hint. As long as Mercury isn't retrograde at the time. The next level is the eagle, or phoenix. The eagle is the most precise when it strikes, and it's also the most secretive. Its prey doesn't see it coming. This may give you some insight as to why the eagle was chosen for the symbol of the United States. The phoenix rises from the ashes and is transformed to be reborn anew. And these are the three levels of Scorpio. The serpent in this context of the story of original sin is simply the big mystery of it all. Because Scorpio likes to dig deep to get at the mysteries. And this is why those with strong astrological placements in Scorpio make the best healers. The sign is geared towards getting at those mysteries, to seek knowledge. And this is the tree of the knowledge of good and evil after all. And so Eve eats of the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil, and she gets Adam too as well. And what was the big mystery? Well, for one, they realized that they were naked, and so they covered themselves up. Scorpio on the body is representative of the genitals, and it also represents secrets and mysteries, and this is why we cover ourselves up from being naked. And they were ashamed at their previous nakedness, and they hid from God. And God came looking for them, calling out to them, Why are thou hiding? And he found that they had clothed themselves. And so God knew that they had disobeyed him, as if he didn't know that they were going to do that anyway. And so, as the story goes, he punishes them by casting them out of the Garden of Eden and making them mortal. And a few other choice tidbits in there as well, such as painful childbirth for Eve, etc. Now, this may seem unfair and unjust. However, the divine does not work like our logical conscious mind. It is more like the subconscious mind, as that is what the divine comes through. It wasn't about them not knowing any better. It was about them not taking God at his word. 
And as I explained in Words of Power, the Word is everything. In the beginning there was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. But more so than that, he gave them exactly what they asked for, knowledge of good and evil. And forget the evil part. Up until that time, there wasn't any good either. Things weren't good or evil. Things just were. Everything just was. There was no concept of good and evil. If you go back to that lesson on judgment, you may see why it's so important not to cast judgment when doing magic. To not see things and situations as good or bad, but to just see them as they are. Things just are. And so he gave them exactly what they were asking for, knowledge of good and evil. But in order to do so, they couldn't stay in the garden because in the garden, things just are. Because Eden is representative of the subconscious mind. This is the moment where the conscious mind was born. And now you have duality because you have to have that duality for there to be a good or an evil, a good or a bad. And how does one obtain knowledge of anything? Experience. And so they now have to experience both the good and the bad. Have you ever wondered why bad things happen to good people and vice versa? The only way to obtain true knowledge is experience. And we're all still being given that experience by what we choose. And we choose by what we focus on. If you focus on the bad and the evil, that's what you're going to get more of. If you focus on the good, you're going to get those good experiences. It cares not which you choose. So it's entirely up to you what experiences and knowledge you're given. But this duality is just polar opposites of one and the same thing. If something bad happens and you focus upon the good in that you can completely turn things around in your favor. This is a realm of duality. This world is both genius and insane. For how can it be anything but when you're caught between the dualities? For everything good that comes along or is invented, there's always something bad that comes along with it also. Take the automobile. It helps us to get from place to place and travel very quickly. But more people are killed each day by the automobile than any other reason, at least here in the States. Microwave ovens. They can heat your food really, really quickly. But it also eliminates almost any nutritional value that that food had in it to begin with. Nuclear power plants can provide power for entire cities and regions. However, when something goes wrong, that entire region can become uninhabitable for quite some time. Look at Fukushima. Chernobyl. So be wary when they say that technology will save us. Because anything that seems really good, there's always going to be something bad that comes along with it. You cannot escape duality. Not in this realm. And now you may realize why this world can seem so beautiful and so ugly at the same time. And it's up to you, each and every one of you, to choose what you focus on. And this is why those in the know and in the media have you focusing on really, really bad things. You have no obligation to focus on what they want you to focus on. By focusing on what you want to focus on, 
you get to choose your experience of the knowledge of good and evil. And I'll see you next time. Take care.